good morning and welcome to Grace Baptist Church. If you have a hymnal, please take it and turn to hymn 246. Hymn 246, Redeemed. And we will sing all four verses, hymn 246. supply all our need in Christ Jesus. So, uh, remember, at the end of the Sunday school hour, we will uh, be uh, ceasing the live broadcast to restart again just before the 11 o'clock hour. And so we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then Nathaniel will be here to take over Sunday school. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to uh, come and worship you and have this time of Sunday school. Although we're not assembled together physically, we know that we can unite in prayer around your throne. And for that, we are so thankful. Lord, I ask that you would have your hand upon uh, all of the friends and family of Grace Baptist Church. You know how much we miss seeing them and miss being able to uh, fellowship in person, but we are trusting you that this will come to an end soon and that we will be able to once again uh, unite physically in fellowship. Lord, we do pray for the needs that are represented 
those that have physical needs due to uh, illness and injury. Lord, we do pray for the financial needs represented. But Lord, most of all, we pray for the spiritual needs. We ask that you would use this time to draw us closer to you and that we would uh, be used of you to bring others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. All right. Well, good morning. All righty. Well, this morning, uh, if we could go to 1 Samuel, and we're going to start in chapter 3, 1 Samuel chapter 3, and while turning there, uh, doing a little cleaning uh, this weekend at the house, I came across uh, a joke that I've written down uh, a while back. It's been a good while. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. It's, um, there's 15 of these. It's, you know you're in a redneck church if. And the first one is the finance committee refuses to provide funds for the purchase of a chandelier because none of the members know how to play one. Now I'm going to hope that y'all are laughing. I'm just going to take it by faith that y'all find these funny. Um, if not, I found it funny, and I guess that's what matters. <laughs> All right, so you know you're in a redneck church if people ask when they learn that, or sorry, people ask when they learn that Jesus fed the 5,000, whether the two fish were bass or catfish, and what bait were used to catch them. All right. You know you're in a redneck church if the pastor says, I'd like to ask Bubba to help take up the offering, and four guys stand up. You know you're in a redneck church if on the opening day of deer season, their church is closed. You know you're in a redneck church if a member of the church requests to be buried in a four-wheel drive truck because it ain't never been in a hole it couldn't get out of. You know you're in a redneck church if the choir is known as the OK Corral. You know you're in a redneck church if in a congregation of 500 members, there are only seven last names in the church directory. You can call them stop it, you guys. You know you're in a redneck church if people think rapture is what you get when you lift something heavy. You know you're in a redneck church if the baptismal pool is a number two galvanized wheel and wash tub. You know you're in a redneck church if the choir robes were donated by the, oh, excuse me, the choir robes were donated by and embroidered with the logo from Billy Bob Barbecue. You know you're in a redneck church if the collection plate are really hubcaps from a 1957 Chevy pickup truck. Amen. <laughs> you know you're in a redneck church if, if instead of a church bell, you are called to service by a duck call. <laughs> you know you're in a redneck church if thou shalt not covet applies to hunt dogs too. Right. And last but not least, you know you're in a redneck church if the final words of the benediction are, y'all come back now, you hear? All right. Amen. <laughs> that is it. Hopefully y'all laughed at at least one. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so hopefully by now you found 1 Samuel chapter 3. And uh, before we start reading... Um, I do have a uh, little brain teaser that I want to ask you, and since, you know, it, it's, it's through electronic, there, I can't really get a response, so uh, if you want, you can type a response, that'd be pretty neat, but if not, just, you know, do it, do it with your mind, and, and this is one that I've heard when I was really young, I know I'm young now, so I can't say when I was young, so when I was really young, uh, I remember hearing this, and... Uh, and I remember the first time I heard this, that uh, it got me. Like, I, I didn't know the answer. 
Uh, and then once I realized the answer, I was like, ah, sneaky, sneaky. Um, and so if you know the answer, you know, that's fine. Um, but maybe there's one that is watching that doesn't know the answer. And so um, let me just ask you this. And it's, again, a little brain teaser. And, uh, uh, and we'll, go, we'll, we'll go from there, okay? All right, so here, here it goes. You're, uh, you're driving a bus. You go east 12 miles and turn south and go two miles and take on nine passengers. And then you turn west and go three miles and let four passengers off. How old is the bus driver? Now, uh, again, I, you know, uh, uh, when I was younger and I was asked that, when I was being asked that, this, this brain teaser, you know, I remember that uh, I, was, I was trying to figure out the specifics, right? I mean, here it is, you know, it, it's east, it's south, it's west, it's north. I'm like, okay, I, I'm remembering those because, you know, those are things that he is he's specifically saying. So those mean, that, that just, you know, in my mind, that means it's important. So I need to pay attention to that. And then he's talking about miles, how many miles is going on, okay? 12 miles, 2 miles, 3 miles. Those are important. And then passengers. All right, he, he brought on nine passengers and he let go four passengers. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm doing the math on, on all these things. And then all of a sudden I remember when I was asked, a, 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 I was blindsided because he said, how old is the bus driver? There was nothing mentioned about the bus driver. You know, when, 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 I, when I was paying attention, you know, the miles, the, 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 miles, the, the, the directions, the passengers, thinking this has nothing to do with the bus driver. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, 12 miles, 2 miles, or, you know, if I try to subtract these or try to add these, maybe that's how old he is, or maybe it's the passengers. Maybe they have some kind of connection, or maybe, maybe it's all the above. Maybe all of them have something in common to make... The, the answer of the, the, the bus driver's age. And for the longest time, you know, it, it took me a while. And my friend that told me, uh, he was he was a, a good friend. He's still a good friend of mine uh, from when I was younger. When I'd go to the church, uh, 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 when I, you know, my parents' church, uh, he had a rule that he would not tell you the answer no matter what. You would have to figure it out. And for the longest time, I could not figure out that answer. I was like, I truly don't know. And so I begged him. And I said, please, you know, for our friendship's sake, please tell me the answer. And he finally told me the answer. Well, he answered my, he answered my, my answer with the question. He said, well, how old are you? I was like, what does that matter? You know, I don't get what that matters. He says, because if you remember when I said, the first thing I said was, you are driving a bus. And when he said that, my, my mind was blown. I was like, you got to be kidding me. This entire time, the, the, the most important thing that was mentioned in this, in this brain teaser was this three-letter word. It was a three-letter word. And that was Y-O-U. You. You are the bus driver. See, I was paying attention to the, the to a little bit of details, but I wasn't paying attention to the, the biggest part of the whole thing. Was you. You are driving the bus. That was it. He could have said all, oh, he could have kept going on and on and on, but that did, that did not matter. Matter what mattered was, was that I was driving the bus. And so here it is that we get into situations, and we're in 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we'll go ahead and read, and, and I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, uh, and we're going to start in verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. The Bible says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes being uh, 
and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out into the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel lay, was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he, and he answered, I call not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know yet, did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And um, we're going to stop there. And here it is that, again, we, going back to that brain teaser, that we are going through life, and it seems like things are going on, and we have problems in life. And I know as a kid, for me, you know, uh, even now, uh, I, can, I, I, I have a hard time uh, uh, focusing. You know, I, I just can't focus on one thing, you know, and when I try to focus on one thing, I lose track. And I, I'm easily doing that. I can easily do that. You know, I, it kills my wife sometimes when I'm trying to clean a house because I get distracted by the, the smallest thing, and I'm no longer cleaning the house no more. I'm a horrible multitasker. <laughs> I, get, I get easily distracted. And here it is, you know, and, and, and sometimes... You know, uh, uh, people will talk, and again, easily distracted, I'll just kind of just, maybe I'll think while they're talking, you know, I'm not, maybe nothing around me, but I'll just, I'll just think, and when people are talking, I'm in my own little world, I'm not even paying attention no more. You know, I'm just, I'm just, those thoughts are distracting me. And we miss something important. You know, I mean, for instance, if, you know, if my wife was telling me, you know, things that I need to do, you know, if she was going, uh, 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 you know, going somewhere far away for, for, uh, for a few hours or something, and she said, hey, you know, I would like for this to get done, and she starts talking, and while she's talking, I'm just, well, let me just go in my own little world while she's talking, and, you know, she said, well, and when this gets done, we can go do this, you know, we can, we can, you know, I like ice cream, you know, we can go, Get some, get some ice cream from Dairy Queen, you know, or something, you know, and so, you know, I'm just in my own little world, and then I miss it, and then when she comes home, well, I thought I told you to, you know, to, 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 to you know, I gave you some, you know, as, as, as I guess as guys like to call it, a honey-do list, you know, and here it is, get easily easily distracted and so listening is crucial and it is important you know and, and that and it, it's very important in all kinds of relationships you know I mean especially you know in in marriage you know listening you know when, uh, going back to being well let me go back real quick being a kid right it's important to listen to your parents Right? Listening to your parents. Because there's been many times when my mom told me to do something and I didn't do it. And guess what? I got in trouble. And she said, you didn't listen to me. And I learned that I needed to listen. You know, now I'm married. Listening is crucial in a marriage. Because Amen. I know for me, if I was pouring my heart out to my wife, I said, this is what's going on in my life. And all of a sudden, I find that in the middle of it, I'm, I'm looking, and she's not even listening to me. She's not acknowledging me. That would hurt. 
And I know it would be the same way, you know, uh, uh, flip the coin, it would be the same way if she was pouring her heart out to me. It's important to listen. Right. And I feel like today it's it's not a lot of listening. You know, we, we, we don't, uh, it, it seems like, to, uh, especially in today's day and age, it's, it just seems like it's so busy. So busy and, and, and you know, we, we, uh, uh, we just, we aren't paying attention, you know, and, and here it is that uh, we read uh, in the uh, uh, first verse, the latter part, uh, it says, And the word of the Lord was precious in those days, there were no open vision. Now, that's just, you know, uh, that's just saying that, that uh, well, let me, let, me, let me say it the way that when I first read it, how I interpreted it, but then as I got uh, further on, I realized that, that the way I thought was, that wasn't the case. See, when I first read this, I thought that God wasn't speaking, no longer speaking to people, that God just said, I'm, I'm, you know, we're just going to hold off for a little bit on, on talking to people, you know, I, and, and that's, how I, that's how I thought of it. But then as I got older and, and, and as I learned more, I realized that that wasn't the case. God was talking. It's just people weren't listening. People weren't wanting to listen. And that's why it is important to listen. And, you know, and, and here it is. Uh, uh, and I want to just look at four reasons uh, on why we're missing God's message today. And the first reason is, uh, like I said before, is, is today it can get busy. You know, I, I mean, trust me, I know. I, uh, I, work, I work a full-time job. You know, I'm, it seems like I'm traveling all over Florida. And when I come home, I have three kids and a wife, you know, and, and two of them are twins. You know, and, and they're all under... Well, okay, the oldest one's two, you know, and so I, I have small children, and so it gets really busy, and I have three dogs currently, hyper dogs, <laughs> you know, and, and one of them is a puppy, you know, so it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of busy, it, it's a lot of, a lot of action going on, you know, and, and, and so I know how, how life can get, and I, and I know that people are even more busy than I am. I'm not saying that I have the most busiest life that uh, life can offer. I know that. That, that that's, that's, that's not what I'm saying. But I know in my life how easy it is for me to not listen to see what God has to say. Because I can say, God, you know, I, I work a full-time job. And when I'm there, I have to have the mindset of what I'm doing. You know, because I drive heavy machines. you got to pay attention. Uh, when driving a heavy machine, I know that because once I hit a house while driving a machine. They weren't happy with that. <laughs> right? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. You know, and so I can say, God, you don't understand. I, I, you just don't understand. I have to, you know, for me to, to, to listen to you while I work, that's hard. Because I'm, I'm focusing on so many things at work that I can't just stop and just say, all right, God, what do you want? I, I can come up with that excuse. And then when I come home, God, again, you don't understand. I got three kids that constantly need us. You know, it's, 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 it, you can't get away from them. And then I have dogs that I have to take care of because, you know, can't neglect the, 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 the animals. You know, don't want to. God, I, I'm, just, I'm just so busy. I don't have time, to, you know, I, I, I don't have time to listen to it. To, to, to listen to what you have to say. You know, ca catch me on a break, you know. Catch me on a break, but even, even then, right? I know uh, when I was young, uh, when I was a couple years ago, um, before I was married, I know that uh, I liked, uh, not saying I don't like to now, but I like to listen to things when I'm sleeping. And there was a time... Uh, and I stopped doing it once I realized how dangerous it was. But there was a time when I would fall asleep with headphones in. And I would listen to, you know, you know, oceans, you know, I was just, you know, nature. I, I would listen to something. So even then, even when I was catching a break, 
I was still saying, God, I'm, I'm too busy. <laughs> I don't want to listen to it. You know, and, and, and you know, and even then, you know, we 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 get too busy in our lives that we don't want to just stop and just listen. And, and I feel like that can that can hurt us, you know, because again, it's a relationship. You know, if you are a born again Christian, you have you have a relationship. Whether it's a good one or a bad one, you have a relationship with God. That's right. And just like how I have my wife and we have a relationship with talking, that's how it should be. Same thing with God. God wants to talk to you. It doesn't mean God, God's not always wanting to say, hey, I need you to go do this. I need you to go to the mission field. And then once you get there, hey, I need you to go to this mission field. It isn't, it isn't you know, I don't always... When I always talk to my wife, I don't always, it's not always a demand. It's not always, you know, hey, this needs to get done. You know, this this needs to get done. No, we talk. You know, just sometimes we talk about this ridiculous things. You know? That's right. That, that's how, that's the relationship that we need to have with God. It doesn't always have to be, and then I feel like when we do talk to God, that it's always got us asking God something. God, I have a request for you. Now, with that being said, I, that doesn't, Father God, you know, I mean, at least you're talking to him, but it doesn't always have to be God, you know, it doesn't seem like whenever something's happening in our lives that, hey, I need to talk to God now, you know, because how would that, how would me and my wife's relationship work if that was the case if I treated her like that or she treated me like that? Yeah. Whenever there was a problem, hey, now let's talk, you know, or hey, I got a request from you, let's talk real quick. I can say that we... If that was how we were when we were dating, we probably wouldn't have got married <laughs> because we want to talk. And same thing with God. God doesn't just want us to come just because we got a problem. You know, I mean, God, God loves to hear how our day's going. That's right. You know, God, God loves to hear. You know, just, just God. You know, hey, I saw that. I, that was funny. Thank you for, thank you for allowing me to see that. You know, I heard Nathaniel's redneck church jokes this morning. Thank you for allowing him to do that for me, you know. <laughs> just, you know, just simple, just, you know, just things. You know, God, God loves, you know, when I, when you read in Genesis about Adam and Eve walking with the Lord, yeah. daily talking to God, I don't think God was taught, telling, commanding Abraham, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Adam and Eve to do things. And I don't think Adam and Eve are always asking God to do something for them. I believe they had a communication just friend to friend. God, wow, you know, look at that line. You know, I mean, that is that is something else. You know, or, or look at this animal. You know, look look at that. God, are you sure you want those spiders still here? I mean, yeah. We can get rid of those. You know, we can get rid of those. You know, I mean, they probably just had conversations. You know, and so we we get too we get so busy, and and we find we hardly find time to listen. To what God has to say. And then the second one is like that brain teaser I said, is that we're looking at the wrong things. We're looking at the wrong things. You know, again, God is speaking, and, and, and we think that God is going to come in some, you know, speak in some bolt of lightning or or some earthquake. You know, or now we're, we're going through a, 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 a pandemic, you know, I, and I'm not saying that this isn't a way that he's speaking to us, but we think that God is doing, that God only speaks in some big, miraculous way. But in 1 Kings, you'll read about a man named Elijah, who he was in a mountain, and all of a sudden there was, there was a, a mighty wind, and Elijah said, maybe this, this is from God. But it wasn't. And then there was an earthquake. Maybe this is God. But the Bible says that God wasn't in an earthquake. And here it is that it said that Elijah, that, that God did a gentle whisper. A still, small voice. Amen. And Elijah heard that. He heard and, and, he, and he got out of the mountain where he was staying and, and, and he said, all right, Lord, I, I heard you. You know, and, and, and like I said, back to, to the brain the brain teaser that I said this morning. You know, we when I was younger, I paid attention to those things that weren't important. 
Like, okay, the miles, the, the passengers, the, 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 um, you know, the time, and all these things. But those weren't the important of the, of the riddle or of the uh, brain teaser. It was, like I said, you. That was the important part. You are the bus driver. A lot of time, you know, again, a lot of times things happen. And not saying that God doesn't speak in miraculous ways. I mean, he spoke to Moses through a burning bush. That's right. He spoke to Mary with an angel. Yeah. He spoke to uh, Balaam with a donkey. Yeah. You know, God, God does speak in miraculous ways. But I feel like a lot of times he speaks to us through a small voice. And, and we, we get so caught up in the things in life that aren't important. No, uh, I shouldn't say it like that. The things that that we, I guess we use excuses and we say, well, maybe this is what God's saying. Maybe this is what this may, maybe this is what God is speaking through, and we only look for the big flashes. Mm. But God's God's been speaking the entire time. Hey, I'm speaking, and we we allow those we allow these big things to muffle God's voice, and we aren't listening. You know, could you imagine if Elijah was just just so in tune with with what's going on around him, the, the, the mighty wind, the earthquake, and all these things that he missed God's voice? Yeah, I mean, and I feel like that's how we are sometimes. That we just allow these big things to just muffle God's voice, and when He's speaking, we're not listening. Because we're getting distracted by the minor detail. That's, that's, that's what I mean, the minor details. And we're missing the main point that God's trying to get. And we're looking at all these minor and, and, and you know what? These minor details don't have to be bad things either. That's right. You know, we can allow good things to become minor details. And yet when God's speaking, we miss it. Because we're, we're focusing on the minor details. We're focused, okay, God... Okay, God said I'm the bus driver. Okay, but that's <laughs> that's not important. That's not that's that's not okay. I'm going this long. Okay, I'm dropping off this many. And then He says, "All right." Then, oh wait, what? Where was this? You know, we, we get so focused on the the minor details that we miss the main point. And and so we 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 need to. Again, we we gotta pay attention to when when God speaks. We gotta, and, and that's the thing, you know. We gotta have that close relationship. Amen. You know, uh, Elijah he recognized God's voice, and uh, uh, and, and well, actually, that's my third point. Is sometimes I believe we miss God's mess God's message so often because we forgot what God sounds like. You know, I mean, when's the last time you actually prayed? To God. Actually talked to God. Not just, Lord, thank you for the food, amen. Not just when you're in church and you know you you know you you pray, God. I know I'm praying to you now, but don't ask him to pray. Don't ask him to ask me to pray. Because I don't like praying in public. You know, I was there, I, I you know, I still struggle with that. You know, I'm just praying in public. You know, or you know, just Lord, you know, or, or when things do go wrong, Lord, uh, you know, it's been a while, uh, here I am, you know, but when's the last time you actually prayed? You know, you can read in the Bible many times that God has spoken to somebody, and they respond. Now, here, Samuel, God spoke to Samuel, but we read that, uh, here it was that, uh, uh, in verse 7, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. So here it is. I can give Samuel a break that he didn't, he didn't recognize because God didn't verbally speak to Samuel yet. This was the first time that God had spoken to Samuel. So reading about other people that God has spoken to, they respond. Why? Because they knew God's voice. They knew it. They talked to him on a daily basis. You know, they had conversations with him. And God talked back and they recognized God's voice. So that way when God spoke, they knew, hey, this is God. Listen up. I'm listening. You know, and, and how many times in our lives had God spoken to us and we 
we don't we don't even recognize it. You know, you, you don't even recognize it. You know, I know, I know. Uh, my son, uh, Jedediah. I don't even have to be in the same room as Jedediah, and I can say I can say something. And I, you know, if I, for instance, when I'm at work and I come home and I say something, he without even seeing me, he knows who I am. He goes, "Daddy," and he comes running to me. Why? Why did? Why? Why would he just assume that it's me? You know what? It is me. Why would he assume? Because when I say Jedediah, he knows. That's Daddy's voice. Yeah. That's Daddy's voice. I know that voice. Good. I come and he runs, and you know I'm excited. You know, he, he comes running at me, and then uh, I go back to uh, where the Bible says the verse says that God is referred to as a shepherd. And the verse says that my sheep knows my voice. You know, and, 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 and I know I've said this, I, I'm, I've said this before, maybe somebody hasn't heard it, so I'm going to say it again. But uh, I remember I was, uh, I was early teens, and I went up to go visit my family in uh, the New England area. And there was a sheep farm uh, up there, and, and, and it was pretty cool because... Uh, it wasn't like a typical farm. This guy, the, the farmer, he was like a shepherd. I mean, he was an outdoorsy guy. Uh, and uh, good, he was a good friend with, with uh, my family up north. And he liked doing things the old-fashioned way, like kind of like shepherds do. He didn't, I mean, he had a house, and he did sleep in his house. But there were sometimes he said, it was just such a beautiful night. I slept out here with the sheep. And... And it was just, it was just, it was pretty cool to see. And, and I remember there was a song in the hymnal when I was younger that we would sing sometimes. And the song was, My Sheep Know My Voice. And I remember hearing that and I was like, I got to check, I got to, I got to sing this song. I mean, here it is, sheep, I got to sing it. So I remember I was singing it. And those sheep took off. They ran. I was like, how rude. You know, you got, I'm singing this for you guys. I'm like, maybe my singing's just that bad. I don't know. But I asked, I said, why are they running away? I mean, they, I was petting them and everything. I was, why, why were they running away? And he said, and he gave, and, 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 and he, he, he was a Christian, and he was a Christian, and he, and he gave the, uh, the verse, you know, hey, the shepherd, sheep knows the shepherd's voice. And he knew that song too, and he, you know, he chuckled when I was singing it. So he was singing too. And sure enough, those sheep that ran away, they started coming back because they knew his voice. Amen. You know, they didn't know my voice. That was the first time they ever met me. And they took off. They said, "I don't know you. You could be, you could be a stranger. You could try to kill us. We don't know. We're out of here." But once they heard that shepherd's voice, they they realized a lot of things. Hey, that's a recognizable voice. We know that when we're around that person, we're safe. We know when we're around that person, we're loved. We're taken care of. We like that person. So we're going to hang around that person. And when we're not... When we're allowing things just to get in... You know, just, just muffle God's voice. We, we, we just tune them out. And God is speaking. God's saying, hey... You know, uh, last week, I believe it was last week... Pastor said he was doing the, uh, 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 the the lesson on come unto me. Come unto me. That, that's what Jesus is saying. Come unto me. No matter what. Even if you're on a mountain, God still wants you to come. Right. Come unto me. You know, I, I will get who doesn't want rest? You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go off of his but you know, and God God's saying, God is speaking. And we just allow things to just we, we miss it. You know, and, and we just, we don't understand, we don't, we don't recognize his voice any, uh, anymore. You know, maybe we just allow the world to just, we, we, we spent so much time in the world that we forgot when he speak. You know, if I went, you know, if I, if I left Florida for, for years, or I want to say years, let's say months. I was just gone for months. And my children grew up, and I come home, and without even seeing, without, without seeing me, and I say, hey, Jedediah. There's a strong possibility that he might have forgot what I sound like. You know, maybe years, maybe months, maybe months is too short. Maybe years. He, there's 
the possibility he forgot where I sounded like. You know, he might say, who, you know, he, one of his things is, is, what's that or who's that, you know? He even might talk to, to, to my wife saying, who, who's that? Who's that? Because I haven't talked to him in so long. I talk to him every day. And so he knows my voice. And so maybe there's a time when we just got away from God for, you know, months or years or, just, you know, however long, and, and we just we just forgot what God sounded like. Again, it wasn't that God wasn't speaking. God was talking. It was just nobody was listening. And then lastly, what I think that's uh, uh, a good reason why we're not, or uh, that prevents us from listening to God is because we just don't want to. Mm. We just don't want to listen to God. You know what I mean? Could, could, God, God was calling to Samuel. And here it is that Samuel could have said, God, I'm not interested in what you I mean, I'm not interested. Whatever you got to say to me, I, I don't want nothing to do with it. You know, just, just move along to the next person, please. I, I, I'm, first of all, I'm trying to sleep. You know, it's middle night. I don't want to have to hear it. And second of all, uh, I looked at what, you know, Eli went through. I don't want nothing to do with that. You know, I just want to live my life the way I want to live. I don't want and I don't need your help. So if you could just leave me alone, that would, that would be great. And a lot of times we just, or not just said we, but I feel like times that, we just purposely ignore God. We hear Him. We say, all right, you know, maybe maybe a, a, a conviction that we feel. You know, maybe maybe uh, during, it could be even during or, or uh, before the invitation happened, the Lord's speaking, and you're like, you know what, I, I know what you're wanting me to do, but I don't want to do it. So just tune out. You know, I'm going to tune out. I know that's how I was when I was, when I was, the uh, Lord was working on my on me when I needed to get saved. I knew I needed to get saved. I mean, it felt like it felt like God was grabbing me and saying, "Listen, you, we need to go up there. You need to go up there. You, 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 you need to get saved." And I was like, "No, no, 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 no. I, I hear what you're saying, but no, I'm, I'm okay." Uh, I'm, I'm doing good for myself, you know. And we just we just tune God out, and, and maybe maybe God's saying, "Hey, I, you know, I need you to do this, or I want you to go here, or I need you to say this." And we say, "God, I know what you're saying, but I don't want to. I just I, 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 maybe people think I'm weird, you know. Maybe maybe my friends might unfriend me." Mm. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, I mean, uh, my family, you know, they, 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 they got traditions. And what you want me to do is going against traditions. I can't do that. You know, I, I, it'd just be better if you just leave me alone. And, you know, that's something that God will do. God, and that's one thing that I love about God. Sometimes, sometimes uh, towards other people, not towards me, but sometimes I just wish, God, you need to force yourself. You know, just get that person saved. Make them get saved. But God doesn't do that. He didn't do it with me and He won't do it with anybody. And it doesn't have to be salvation. It could be, you know, anything. God doesn't, will not force Himself to on anybody. And, you know, here it is that Samuel, instead of saying, God, I don't want nothing, I don't want nothing to do, he said, uh, and... Excuse me. In uh, verse 10, it says then the latter part. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. You know, God, it may seem like now that God, and I, again, I don't, I don't know what's going on in your life, but it may seem like God is not speaking. You say, I'm listening, but God is not speaking. Let me Let me let you know that God is speaking. And if you're a born-again Christian, and you're not hearing God's voice, it could be one of these four reasons. And so I, I encourage you to pray and, and ask God, 
You know, why am I not hearing your voice? Because God always has something for us to do. You know, uh, there's never going to be a day in my Christian life where it's busy work, <laughs> busy about. You know, just just do this just because. You know, there's always something to do, and we just need to figure out what that is. The only way we can figure out what that is is listening to God. And I just encourage you to listen. You know, listen to that small voice. And then, like Samuel saying, speak, listen. And say, speak, Lord. I I'm listening. I I'm listening, and, 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 and I got your, your, you, I'm fully paying attention to you. So, with that being said, we'll go ahead and we'll pray and be dismissed. And just a reminder that uh, we're just going to pause the broadcast just for a little bit. And then we'll be back up and running around 11 o'clock, on, on 11 o'clock. Um, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and pray and be dismissed. So, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time again that uh, uh, we can come and uh, just have another opportunity to look into your word. And I do pray that uh, we will uh, just be like uh, Samuel, Lord, just while you speak, just us just listen. And not, not let anything distract us from what you have to say. And, and I just pray that we will uh, not only just listen, but also do what you uh, would want us to do. Uh, and uh, I just pray that that will be our goal in life. And again, I just pray for the remainder of the service. May we honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen.